Hi, I'm Nicholas Lodge and would like to introduce you to my Katie Sue Designs Flower Pro Ultimate Filler Flower Mold. This very unique mold can be used for multiple flowers and uh, in each of the videos based on this mold, we show different areas of the mold. Uh, in this particular video presentation, I'm going to concentrate on this area here, which are bell flowers. So I'm going to start off by showing you Lily the Valley. So when we make the Lily the Valley, first of all, I'm going to show you how to make the buds and also prepare the wires for both the flowers and the buds. I'm going to start off with some quarter width floral tape. So this is being cut with a tape cutter um, that will actually cut the tape into quarters. Alternatively, you could use a pair of scissors. So we need very skinny, thin floral tape so we don't add a lot of bulk to the wire. This is a 30 gauge wire. I'm going to take the end of the wire and my floral tape, often use just a little corn, flower cornstarch on your fingers, and I'm going to tape down. Now the reason I tape this is because floral tape is a different color to the wire. Um, it means that if you didn't tape the wire, they're going to sort of like look a little different, different color. And because Lily of the Valley is a flower where the bell comes from the side of the flower, as you can see here in the finished one, we want to make sure that this tape and this tape color match each other perfectly. So we're going to just cover down the wire. So once you have finished that, I have one that is already uh, covered. So this is 14 inches in length. And generally when we use wires, we're going to take a pair of scissors or pliers and you're going to cut this to seven inches long. All right, this is a very skinny wire, so you can use just obviously uh, just a small pair of scissors or a pair of plier cutters and then wire cutters and then you're going to then uh, cut these wires into thirds and usually I just do that by eye because it's sort of uh, they just need to be very short pieces of wire and again here just going to cut these pieces of wire like so so this will give us six pieces okay, once you've got the wires prepared we're going to make a very tiny hook on the end of these so I'm going to use a pair of uh, tweezers okay and I'm just going to just take my wire and I'm going to usually take about three wires at a time and I almost want to make the hooks on here um, I'm going to come down about one centimeter all right down the down the tweezers here so the edge of the tweezer is going to the edge of the wire is just at the tweezer and then I'm going to just fold this over and just squash this so I'm almost making a smaller hook as I can on the end of the wire okay so it wants to be a very very tiny little hook um, on the ends of your wires and when we prepare the buds we're going to make the buds uh, using the size guide we're going to use number three small and number four small so that means you're going to take a number three ball of paste until it just goes through the hole Okay, so you're just going to see how it just goes, pops through the hole. So that will be your sort of like master size. And then you could make another, say, 11 balls the same size, just using that as your guide. And they just need to be approximately a number three small size, okay? Usually just take um, a little bit of uh, white vegetable fat and vegetable shortening and just condition the paste. So every time you do this, you really need to condition it. I'm going to roll this into a little tiny ball. And then I'm going to take my wire here. I'm going to take a little egg white. So I have a paintbrush here. And I'm just going to dip my paintbrush into my egg white. And I'm just literally going to just brush a little bit of egg white just onto the tip of the wire. And then just going to take the little hook. And a little hook will just go into the little ball of paste. And then using a little cornstarch to have in a little pouch here. Just use a little cornstarch. Just mold this around. But you want to keep this bud in a round shape, all right? Because Lily the Valley bud is basically a round shape. So what I'm going to do here is with the little needle tool, I'm going to use my needle tool here. And I'm just going to press this onto the bud three times. One, two, three. So you create this just this little, like three little lobes. So you just would uh, create the small buds. And then you would just continue with the larger bud. Show you one of those. And as I explained at the beginning, you have multiples of these. So you could have two or three number, three smalls, three or four number, um, obviously four smalls, because it depends a little bit on the size of spray you're making or how you're going to use the flowers, as in how many of each of the components you make. So you're just going to push your wire in, it's going to just pinch around the bottom. And then, as I said, we're going to take the, then the little needle tool and just, just mark just gently one, two, three with the little needle tool just to give your buds that definition on the top 
usually when I'm making um, flowers like this, because these are uh, have very, very thin wires, I usually take a block of styrofoam or a cake dummy, and I normally then put uh, into there some little cocktail straws or cake pop straws. And this makes it very, very easy just to pop those into there. Because if you try and push those into a styrofoam block or cake dummy, they're gonna bend very, very easily. So we're just gonna put those in to, to dry. So now we're gonna move on to the actual flower of the Lily of the Valley. So for the flower part, we're going to use the smaller of the two cavities. There are two bell flowers. Um, this is the one I would use generally for Lily of the Valley. Now for this, we're going to take a number six small size uh, ball of paste. So that means a number six that just goes through the hole, okay? So this is a number six small. We're going to condition the paste. So we're gonna just take a little tiny amount of vegetable shortening or white fat and put into this. And then we're going to then just roll this into a little tiny sausage. Doesn't need to be too long, just about a centimeter, about half an inch in length. Gonna use just a little uh, corn starch on that, corn flour on there, so just put a little of that onto the end of the sausage. And this is gonna go into the, uh, into the cavity. So you're gonna just press that in the cavity like this, and just press it in with your finger, and then I use a cosmetic sponge just to press this over the top. And I'm gonna take my little small balling tool, and I'm just gonna just press that into the middle. This just make sure this impacts it into the mold. And then we can either take the little uh, plastic scraper here, or you could use a little mini knife. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna just trim off the excess paste. So you're just gonna use your uh, scraper, do this in sort of sections. So you work from the middle to the outside. The reason we do that, if we started off here and then just scraped across, you're gonna actually pull the flower out of the mold. But you can also do this using the little mini knife as well, like this. I'm just gonna just gently press this into the mold. So what this is gonna do is gonna just make sure that you've sort of uh, smoothed the edge of this. And then we're going to just flex your mold here. So when you flex the mold, obviously your little flower will come out. This. And you can use your you can use your little pin tool here just to remove that from the mold. So you see how you're gonna have your little bell flower like this, okay? So first of all, I'm going to go in with the balling tool. You can just put that on a little bit of corn flour, corn starch. I'm gonna hollow the actual bell. So you see how I'm actually putting that into the center and this gives you the perfect back for the lily of the valley, okay? And then I'm gonna take this onto the soft side of my pad and with my ball tool, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna just cup each of the petals. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you see what it's actually gonna do, it's going to sort of incurve the petals, you see? So you're just gonna cup those. So literally you're just gonna push this into, into there. And uh, so you just do this on the soft side of the pad. So this will incurve the petals, which gives you the characteristic shape of the lily of the valley. Now we're going to then take your hooked wire. So with my hooked wire here, I'm gonna put just a little bit of egg white just onto the hooked wire. And I'm gonna thread this down through the center of the flower. So just gonna lift your flower up like this and just thread this down through the center. So you think of it like a little bell, okay? And then your hook is gonna just come so it just sits into the bottom. You're just gonna take a small little piece of paste. You don't really have to measure this, but it would be about a number one size. And then you lift this up and then you just drop that little ball of paste into the bottom of the mold. And then using your little balling tool, you press that in. So what this is gonna do, this is going to actually secure the flower onto the wire. Because if not, there's really nothing, no substance to hold it there and the hook could come out. So you just push that into the middle here, like so to give you the characteristic shape of the flower. And then finally, we're gonna take a little, these are just small yellow stamens which you can use white ones and dust them with a little bit of yellow. Um, and you're just gonna cut these fairly tiny. I'm just gonna put one little tiny stamen into the middle here, like so. So you're just gonna take your tweezers, and then with your tweezers here, you're just gonna just lift the stamen up and just gonna pop that into the middle of the flower like that. And then with your thumb and finger, think of like a crab or a lobster, you're just gonna just close up the throat just a little bit. So you're just gonna use your thumb and finger like this just to cover the clo clo cover this up. And uh, just make sure that that goes onto the wire and then you can use your 
little ball tool just to open that up like that. But just you can just pinch that around the wire and this will give you the Lily of the Valley flower, okay? So this is going to give you the sort of characteristics of the Lily of the Valley flower. And you can see how you can make, uh, if you wanted to, you could make some, for example, a little bit more closed up and you can leave some a little bit more open. So you almost have a sort of like a half open flower and a fully open flower if you wish to as well. So that will be the Lily of the Valley. Now, once you've made these, these flowers don't take a long time to dry. I would probably recommend about one hour or 90 minutes, and then you'll be able to move on to the next step, which is going to be assembly. So once the Lily of the Valley flowers and buds have dried, we're going to move on to assemble. Um, in flower, smaller flowers like this, usually I would assemble them first and then color them afterwards. Sometimes on larger flowers or flowers that have overlapping petals like lilies, I often color first and then assemble. So when we assemble again, we're going to go back to our quarter width floral tape. So if you were making many sprays of Lily Valley to the wedding for a wedding cake, you just divide them up into groups. Here I have three of the smallest size buds. So these are the number three small size buds. I have two number four small board buds, and then I have three flowers. But you could have, you know, even five to seven flowers. So depending on how big you want the spike to be. Generally speaking, you don't want to always put them together in the same combination because they won't look as natural. So I'm going to start off with my smallest bud, all right? So with my quarter width floral tape, I'm just going to start with my floral tape, just tape down just a little ways. And then I'm going to bring in my tweezers. So I'm just going to bend that just a little tiny bit down the stem, all right? So you're just going to be a little bit down the stem. And when these are totally dry, you obviously can even just use your fingers for that. And the next one will come. So what we're doing is we're starting off with the straight and then we're going to go to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left. Now this is the way that we put together uh, several of the flowers from the Ultimate Filler Flower uh, mold, including the Pussy Willow, um, including also things like the Forget-Me-Not. So you're just going to use that same combination. So you see how each one will come. So you're going to go to the right, to the left, and come down a little bit further. And now we're going to then put in the Next bud, so this is going to be one of my larger buds here. And then we're going to take the next bud. So just marking these buds three times with the little needle tool just gives them enough uh, definition. So then you're going to then put in the flowers. So when you put in the flowers, so if you have any flowers that are a little bit more closed up, so you see this one is a little bit more closed up than this one, all right? So you could put this in first, because then that represents almost like the natural progression of the... And then usually, um, then you just will continue now with another flower. And when you put the second flower in, so whatever combination of buds, it doesn't matter, but when you get to the second flower, you usually take a 22 gauge wire. This is a 22 gauge wire, this could be white or green. Um, and we're going to add this for strength and stability at the bottom. So you're going to tape the take the wire in right at this intersection where the uh, where the flower meets the wire. We will have at this intersection here. We'll use the 22 gauge uh, wire. And then we're going to just continue down here now to my next one. So obviously you have to be a little bit more careful with the flowers because these petals are fairly thin, which we need to have them so they look realistic. And then usually once you get the flowers completed, all right, so if you were doing three flowers, or for example in this finished spray here, you can see I've got five flowers. Uh, but however many flowers you're doing, you just continue until you get all the flowers in place. And then you can break off the quarter width floral tape and then you can just continue down the wire with half width tape because it's much easier to tape with half width tape. But in the reason why we wouldn't use half width tape to tape the wire when we make the flowers or for final assembly is it would just make the stem look too bulky. So you see here now we're going to tape down towards the bottom. And then to give this the characteristic shape, we're going to then take your tweezers and now you see with your tweezers, you're going to just bend these over. So you're going to get this characteristic bell shape. You're going to do the same on the buds. Like this. And then just the top of the flower. Remember that you're just going to then just bend this with your fingers like this. So you're going to get this beautiful, um, as I said, Lily the Valley. Okay, so this is how we would do the, the Lily the Valley flower. And uh, this is now ready for uh, coloring, which will be the next step. 
Okay, so for Lily the Valley, we're going to, for the coloring, we're going to use some pearl dust. This is a white pearl dust here. So I'm going to dust this onto my, all over my flowers and buds. Except the smallest size buds, because these smallest size buds will actually be dusted, um, will be dusted green. And uh, so we're going to use the pearl dust, just put over the surface here. You can do a little bit of just right at the tip, but they'll have a little bit more green on those ones. So, but, but predominantly you're going to put the pearl dust on the flowers and on the larger buds. Um, so that will be the first color. We're then going to then take your green. So this is going to be some, just some prairie green or soft green color. And I'm going to use a little bit of that, just dust it around the base of the, where the base of the flower is. So you're going to just put a little bit of green. So usually then we'll just come the other side so you can access all areas of this. The general rule of thumb is, is if you can access all areas of a flower, I usually find it easier to assemble the flower and then to color it uh, afterwards. And then we're going to put some green onto the buds as well. So we're going to put a little bit of green onto the buds. And just we'll just continue all the way up to uh, the top here. And then these buds here at the top, these are going to be predominantly green, okay? So you want to sort of really almost just dust these predominantly green because these are the sort of the unopened buds of the Lily of the Valley. So really, as I said, it's, you're coming down almost all the way down the bud with your, with your green. Like we would do with most flowers that are waxy, we would just put this through the steam of a tea, a tea kettle or a clove steamer or a sugar craft steamer, and that would just give a waxy look to the flowers. And then you see, then you can take your flowers here, and then your lily of the valley will actually go uh, with your leaf. A lot of times in a spray, I wouldn't use the leaves. I would just use the lily of the valley stems with their uh, with other flowers. But obviously, if you were doing a spray on a cake, you could just use a spray of Lily of the Valley uh, with its uh, buds and flowers. So here you'll see how you have the beautiful Lily of the Valley uh, with its nice uh, green leaf and uh, set a beautiful mold, very easy to use. And this gives you all of the veining uh, instantly. And as I said, uh, you'll have a lot of fun making Lily of the Valley with this mold.